Maybe we'll do half today and half next time. You want to do that? Works for me. Okay. Um, I got two and a half hours of recording time. So. Oh, my God. <laughs> so we'll have to carry me out of here. Plato and Aristotle were, were interested in the interplay of abstract ideals and their material representations. An abstract ideal is, uh, is like a universal standard or definition. A material representation, on the other hand, is the manner in which ideals transform themselves in the concrete world. So let's give examples of these things. I'll use my talents on the, on the... What is this called? What kind of board is this called? Whiteboard. Right. So here's, here's, uh, we'll use uh, the example of a square. And we'll talk about the abstract ideal of a square. And its material representation. material representation of that abstract ideal. Okay, so an abstract ideal is like a, uh, a definition or a standard. So how, what would be a good uh, definition of a square? First of all, what is, what is the name for a one-sided <coughs> object? Well, a rectangle. Yeah. So we're, let's say it's a rectangle. Rectangle with, go ahead, Brantley. Four sides. Four equal sides. In length. And, go ahead, four equal what? Corners? Angles. Yeah, angles. So there's the uh, abstract ideal. It's a universal definition. It doesn't matter where you are, what century, what country, what language you're using. This is the ideal of a square. Okay? And the material representation, the way this ideal is transformed into the concrete world is this. And according to Plato and Aristotle, reality is made up, if, if everything within this circle represents reality, reality is made up mostly of the abstract ideal or the universal definition, but not to the exclusion of the material of its material representation. By its, I'm referring to the abstract ideal. So what the, the numbers we use was like 60, 40. Plato and Aristotle don't talk in those terms, but that's the most <coughs> remember. Okay, are we, everything is clear so far? So Plato and Aristotle, using this interpretation, became the founders of what later uh, was called classical realism. That reality consists for the most part of abstract ideals, but not to the exclusion of their material representation. Now why did they emphasize these abstract ideals? One, because the abstract ideals are perfect. This is a perfect square. But concrete squares, to varying degrees, are imperfect. So if I had a ruler, I could do a better job with this. But even with a ruler, you know, they would never be perfect. Yes, sir? Can, Can you what? Try and write a relatively good square. There you are. Go ahead. Do it. That's a good
good. Very good. You can do better than I can. Do you have a ruler on you? No. All right, go ahead and do a better one. That's much better than mine. Now let me ask you this. Tell me your name again. Lee. Lee, that's much better than mine. Is that perfect? No, but it's better than yours. There's no question about that. Now, could anybody do a perfect one? I don't know, <coughs> Well, are you aware that the Earth is always rotating? Mm-hmm. Are you... So, there's vibrations going on in the Earth 24-7, mm -hmm. right? Those are earthquakes. No, no, I'm talking about the Earth itself is rotating. As it goes around the Sun, it's rotating. Mm -hmm. That's what makes day and night different in different parts of the world, right? Different parts mm -hmm. of the Earth. So that rotation causes minute vibrations. I'm not talking about big vibrations like earthquakes. And do you know that there's, even though you can't see it, there's dust floating around all over the earth? What is that called? Do you remember the name of science for that dust? Did you know that? So no matter how careful you, a human being could be, or even a robot could be, on earth you could never draw a square that was perfectly four equal size in length and four equal angles, even though the one you drew was much better than the one I drew. There's too many factors going on <coughs> on the earth. Okay? I've got a question. Yes, sir. Yes. It, does the earth's angle it's on has, have something to do with the square not being perfect? What do you mean angle? Well, the Earth is tilted at a 23.5 degree angle. Well, probably does. How do you know that? Because I studied it in science. Tilted into what direction? Um, what do you mean? <coughs> well, I mean, that's I mean exactly that. I didn't know what, uh, I learned something today. So what direction is it tilted in? If it's tilted, it has to be tilted in one direction. For example, you're tilted to your uh, left now when you were leaning against the uh, wall. In other words, the teacher is saying that she forgot to tell you where it was tilted to? Well, in the diagram, it was tilted to the left. Okay, so there you are. <laughs> so that may be it. But for Plato and Aristotle, who lived in the 3rd century BC, they emphasized these abstract ideals over the material representation because the definition is perfect. But no material representation could match the perfection. That's the first reason. The second reason I did is, if I erase this, I want to do it carefully, and I erase this, are they gone? Are they gone? Yes. Yeah. Now watch this. Are they going? The material representation. Yes, yeah, the material representation going? Yeah. <coughs> because they came from one of these uh, pens on a board. By the material things. Now watch this. If I erase this, I'm going to try to do it as carefully as I can so there's no residue. If I erase this, is this going? No. Why? Because you wrote the definition there, that's still square. I, I didn't know what you said. The definition remains the same. Where does it remain the same? In the stratosphere, the ideal. Well, in your imagination. Yeah. If you understand it. So, this, so the two reasons why, they, why classical realists emphasize the abstract ideals over the material representation, but they didn't ignore the material representation, is number one, the abstractions are perfect, while the material representations by definition cannot be. The Earth is tilted 23 degrees to the left, for example. And the abstracts are forever, and material representations are temporary. 
their material representations that mean they have that means that they have to be made of concrete things like wood. Well, ultimately, wood rots. Concrete, concrete cracks eventually. They made of sand. Well, the tides destroy sand and move it around. Steel. I mean, the list can go on and on and on. All of those material things deteriorate in one way or another. Even uranium has a shelf life. Isn't that true? How many thousands of years? But I mean, you know that. So the point is, that's one of the reasons why they, they fear nations that develop nuclear weapons, because they're always using uranium and then discarding it. Where do you discard it? It's such a dangerous element. It doesn't go away for thousands and thousands of years. So they think maybe they could put it in a concrete container and put it hundreds of miles below the earth. Well, that concrete is going to deteriorate in some way. And then the uranium gets into the groundwater. I mean, the, you know, I mean, the point I'm trying to make is, is that, is that the, all material things have a shelf life. <coughs> but abstract ideas, if, if they're defined properly and you understand them, never disappear. Okay? So that's the classical realism. The definition of the brain too. No, you, you, don't, you don't see that anywhere. The brain is the center. What is the what what does the brain do? What does the brain do? It thinks. It, it's the center for all your sensory knowledge. So for example, when I touch this table, how do I know it's a table? Because of the Well, I mean it goes through my fingers, the senses sensory part of my fingers, and it goes where? To your brain. And the brain tells me what I felt was? A table, or yeah. like what you felt yeah. a couple if of If I go do this, I'm closing my eyes, but if I do this because of past experience, my brain tells me it's a? Wall. Yeah. So the brain actually is the connecting point from all your sensory experience, sensory experiences, which is material. You understand? Yes. But the mind is something else. The mind and brain are not the same things. The, the mind is the, sense, is the center of not your sensory experiences, but your imagination. So when I erase that definition of a square, I erase what you could see with your brain, but I didn't erase what you could see with your imagination. Because there's different centers in your being for those two different experiences. So what you're saying when you talk about abstract ideals is, I imagine a square to be this. And then another person says, I imagine a square, no, to be that. And a third person, and then somewhere as a result of dialogue over, what, a year, a hundred years, a thousand years, People come up with what they think is the universal ideal or definition or form of a square. And if it's correct, everyone can understand it through their mind. It never goes away. First of all, it's perfect, and it never disappears from your imagination. So you're saying, back to when you were saying you can never make a perfect... Concrete or material square, square you know. Um, so you're saying none of these picture frames up here are perfect. Go off them down the floor. In comparison to the ideal of a picture frame. Yeah, that's right. They all have a floor of some kind. That's right. Purpose of a, of a frame? Put a picture in. No. It's to put a picture in in a way that frames the picture beautifully. So you're, you're asking wonderful questions. She really is very intelligent. You're asking wonderful questions. 
So the key to understanding an abstract ideal of a thing is to understand its unique purpose. What is the only thing that that can do? The picture frame is to frame that picture beautifully. That's its unique purpose. Now, can you imagine a frame that would frame those, the, let's say, the, the picture right next to you more beautifully than that? Can um, you imagine one? Yes. Well, that's the point. So that's its flaw. It isn't framing it as beautifully as you could imagine. Now, let's see. Let me go over there and look at what you're looking at, and let's talk about it. <coughs> you understand the point better. Well, I'm seeing all the ones with the we're not talking about screens anymore, we're talking about picture frames. Now, can you imagine a way that that, that you know who that is, by the way? Uh, That's uh -oh. a famous uh, psychiatrist by the name of Sigmund Freud. Could you imagine a way that this fra a frame that could be more beautifully framed, that lithograph? I mean, in my opinion, it could have diamonds around it. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Maybe you're right, but that's the point. That's the point. That it would be possible to more beautifully frame, we're not talking about a square anymore, we're talking about a picture frame. And that's an excellent, so that, the, those abstractions, the crux of an abstraction is find, of discovering an abstraction is discovering what its <coughs> unique purpose is. What is it the only thing that can do? Uh, frame a picture. Yeah. So if you can imagine a way to frame that that picture, that lithograph of Sigmund Freud more beautifully, then there's a flaw in that picture frame. So could we say that there's a picture frame that is perfect? Only in your mind. Only in your mind. But nothing human can be perfect. According to Plato and Aristotle. So what about that whiteboard behind you? What about it? How is that not perfect? It's not perfect because the first whiteboard I used, I ruined. Remember, were you in that class? Yeah. <laughs> <that's it. Wait. laughs> you used a permanent marker. <laughs> yeah. Okay, but how does I that make? I used a permanent marker, and it never was right ever again. How does that make that one unperfect? Because they're liable to be ruined by fools like me. That's why. Fair now the question is, how much do you think it costs to put that board on there? A couple of good dollars. Hundreds, thousands of dollars? Maybe not thousands. But hundreds of dollars? Maybe not hundreds. Well, why is that better than a blackboard? Well, you can't ruin it, you just kind of erase it. And then at the end of the day or the end of the week, somebody comes in with a wet rag and start all over again. Why is that better than a blackboard? Do you have these boards in your school or a blackboard? Uh, those boards and we have smart boards. You have a blackboard and a smart board? Oh, we don't have blackboards. We have whiteboards. They're all whiteboards. What is the advantage of a whiteboard over a blackboard? Chalk? It's hard to say. It is hard to say because there is no advantage. Somebody, somebody's cousin makes these things, who runs the school board, and decided to give them the money. I mean, there, I, have you ever figured out what, why these are now so popular? Because they look. The only computer makes everything look neater than. Huh? It looks neater than a chalkboard. Like you can read things more clearly. And, and you use markers, and as opposed to like holding that chalk, that ashy feeling chalk. I don't know. Just... And now it's smart. Since I'm the one that uses smart. it, I can tell you I, I prefer blackboard. Now it's smart boards. What smart is a smart board? What is that? What is that? Oh, it's like the like computer. So is it like. Yeah. yeah. It's a big touch screen. Yeah. It's a big touch screen computer. It's a. That you can use. It's oh, like it a big touch screen computer in the front of the classroom that you can write on. You, you attach can... it to the internet, you can yeah. show movies on it. You, you attach it to your computer. Show PowerPoints on it from your laptop. That's <coughs> pretty much what that is. And it has an electronic marker that you wipe with. And then and you 
race with. And it has a projector. Uses a projector. So not only is the cut, not only is it the material thing that you sense with not perfect. It's also not forever, because every material thing disintegrates to one degree or another, whether it's steel or whether it's... So would you say that picture frames would get replaced by like, pictures on a phone? I'm talking, about, I'm talking about someday that's going to fall down and crack. That picture frame is going to crack. It's going to change. It's inevitably going to change. Yeah. How? I just told you it's going to... It's going to fall off the wall and hit the ground and crack. Or the wood's going to rot completely away. But the idea of a square will never change. But that's not as the idea of a picture frame will never change. Okay. The idea of a picture frame okay, I think will never change. It's, the difference. it's difficult. It's particularly difficult to understand because in 2017, we don't believe in universal things and universal ideas and universal forms. So for example, if I said that the unique purpose of a picture frame is to frame a picture beautifully, in 2017 the response always is, well, what do you mean by beautiful? And then if you try to give a def definition of beauty, Americans respond by saying, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. <clears throat> so that's why, one of the reasons why it's very hard to understand the concept of universal ideals. Because we don't believe that there's anything universal in this country. We lost that idea many, many centuries ago. Well, what do you mean by universal? Always true. And everybody always will. exists. Like, like universal means everybody agrees that this is... What's good? What's no, it doesn't mean every, it means everyone who's rational agrees. Yeah. So, the absolute, like an absolutist, for example, like that's an absolute definition of truth. That that's, yeah. We don't believe in so absolutes. Take, yeah. take this pencil, for example. Yeah. If everybody in the world, or in this country, yeah. or whatever, agreed that this pencil is the best pencil. No, did everyone in this country agree that there's a unique purpose to a pencil. And it will never be changed. And it would, if you got the unique purpose properly, then it would never be changed. Every pencil is the same. Not according to Plato and Aristotle, because once you come up with the unique pencil, the purpose of a pencil, some pencils that you hold in your hand fulfill that unique purpose properly and some don't. But none of them that you hold in your hand fulfill it perfectly, just to varying degrees. But again, we don't believe in universals. We don't believe in absolutes. We say we're what is known as a relativist. What about people? Aren't, there, aren't they universals? Well, you're asking wonderful questions. I mean, uh, so, if everything has a abstract form, <coughs> then human beings have an abstract form too. Now watch this carefully. So in order to find out the abstract form of a human being, you have to determine what is it unique about a human being? What is it that only a human being can do that no other living thing can do? And the answer that Plato and Aristotle gave and also that people like Abraham and Jesus gave, would be only human beings have free will. That is to say, only human beings, what, the, what is the abstract ideal of a human being, what is the human being's unique purpose, is that only human beings can know the difference between right and wrong and then freely choose between one course of action or the other. So only human beings can Choose what they want to do? No. Choose, know the difference between right and wrong, and then choose between the right way, the morally right way, and the morally wrong way. Rationalize. Only oh, they can rationalize. I don't know what you mean by rationalize. Like, like you're, using the term, you're using the term proper. 
Rational and rationalize are not the same words. Rational means I'm thinking of something and then I come to a rational conclusion. Rationalize means I've come to the conclusion without even thinking about it. That's what rationalize means. It's the opposite of rational. Rationalization and reasoning. Yeah, reason. Okay, well, I guess maybe that's what I'm trying to say. The only words you can reason. According to Plato, to according to Plato and Aristotle and Moses and Jesus and Muhammad or whoever you want to, know, to, to talk about, or leaders of uh, civilization, they believe that every human being through his or her reason and free will can know the difference between right and wrong and then choose between the two courses of action. So even when a human being chooses an immoral course of action, they're still a human being because only a human being could choose to do the wrong thing. That still doesn't answer my question, though. What was it? Are human beings or people um, universal? A physical human being? You're asking me whether a physical human being is universal? Is that what you're asking me? I, I mean, like... There's two things that are going on here. The idea of a human being and a physical person, which are you referring to? A physical person. Well, you're, you're, are they or universal? I mean, people die. Well, then they're not universal. <laughs> but the idea of a human being, that only human beings have the ability to know the difference between right and wrong, that's forever. things that are going on here. The idea of a human being or a human being, which are you referring to? A human being. Well, I know the idea of a human being is <coughs> universal. If you, get the, if you get the definition right and the correct definition of a human being according to Plato and Aristotle and Moses and Jesus, for example, was that only human, because you, to get that abstract ideal you have to look for its unique purpose. And they said the unique purpose of a human being that only a human being can do, that only a human being can form, perform, is that to know the difference between right and wrong and consciously choose to do one or the other. That's forever. But any one person dies, just like every sandcastle is destroyed. So say I was to describe a certain human being uh, like my mom, for example, mm -hmm. um, and I described her, and in my mind, that would be universal for her. I don't know what you're talking about. Your mother and me and Hacker and you are going to die sometime. So we're not uh, physical persons, uh, I material, know. Are, are not for, forever. But your idea of that person, is it? The idea of people, human beings, is only they have the ability to know the difference between right and wrong. Okay. Has your mother made mistakes sometimes, in your yes. opinion? Yes. Well, does that make her less of, does that make her not a human being? No. Why? Because if you don't make mistakes, you're probably not. No, because a human, human being. beings can, only human beings can make mistakes. That's, they have free will. You can only make a mistake if you have the free will to do the right thing or the wrong thing. So the idea of what you think of the human being is or isn't universal? If you define it correctly, that's the universal, yeah. Okay. Your mother isn't universal and neither are you, neither am I. But the idea of a human being, if you define it correctly, is. What so about a question from you? Mm. Well, so the idea of a specific person isn't like, for instance, you get the, uh, he dies in the, uh, is it Achilles, I think, is one day, he dies in the Iliad, but he, he dies with the idea that it's, he's going to get the, uh, like, eternal glory, like, you know. Yeah, but his soul gets eternal glory, not his physical. Right, presence. right, right. Yeah, he, I mean, he died right there. Yeah. But the, the, the idea of him, uh, uh, 
goes through all of human history. The idea of him is his soul, which right. is the center of his free will, or his mind. Another term for soul is mind, spirit.